Hello and welcome SSSP students. Today we present to you Japanese art in origami by me, Roy Avalos, and Juan Roman. Yes, sir. Let's get started, shall we? Japanese art. Japanese art has it's a variety of things, right? Japanese, they're very artful, very cool. And stuff that they have is things like ancient pottery, sculpting, ink, painting, calligraphy, woodblock prints, origami, manga, and anime. And today, we will be covering origami because I think it's pretty cool and it's a really fun activity to do. Take it away. Okay, the origins of origami. Well, cl classic origami here. The earliest was seen around the sixth century. After the common era, origami lends us to our way in our new dimensions of aesthetic beauty. Aesthetic is nice. It was first began as a religious art form, and then when paper became more affordable, it became common to use it as decoration and good luck charms on packages. The neoclassical origami. Eventually, paper became cheap, and origami became a social culture phenomenon. And I'm going to butcher this word, but it's Sembaruksu. Sembazuru. Sembazuru orikata. Exactly that word. It's a book written during the neoclassical origami era that taught how to cut and fold origami. And then the modern origami era, woo, that's the closest one. It's during the 1950s with patterns that became prominent. Um, there were uh, instructions passed down by words and mouth, which is not by words, it's by mouth. And then this person, Akari Yoshigawa, is the father of modern origami that created a set of folding techniques and universal symbols, almost like a language. He also formed local and international organizations that promoted origami. Okay. Hypermodern origami. It's the mathematicians and architects today use origami to explore theories, models, and designs. There's also origami, origami puzzles and popular expressions of art. The benefits of origami. Now, why would you want to take up origami as a pastime or a hobby? Why would you want to do that? I know what you're asking, and let me tell you the answer. To I don't it. know. Origami is used for therapy for stroke patients. So if you, you know, if some a family member or something had a stroke and whatever, and you want to like prevent that from happening to you, use origami. Origami. I knew that. Fun. And it's also just stress relieving, right? I mean, what's more stress relieving than just folding paper and then making a, a frog or a, an airplane or whatever you, your brain can think of? Yeah. It's also used to teach discipline and focus on visual arts, right? That's and true. Discipline. What do you know about discipline? Japanese. Japanese samurais. Samurais were taught to be disciplined. To do, yep. And they used origami to do that. Yep. Pretty cool. I remember. Now, types of origami. Origami is a very complex art. There's different ways that you can do origami. You have action origami, which contains moving parts. Modular origami, large origami models made of small identical origami pieces. For example, over here on this top left, you have a crane that has some tiny little pieces that were put together. And for action origami, you have things like the fortune teller where it has moving parts that fold and stuff like that. Wet folding, as you can see over here with this bowl, it's, it's curved. Now, as you know, folding paper, there's no curves on paper, it's just sharp so edges. How do we do that? You wet it a little bit and then you fold it and it has a little nice smooth surface. Yep. More types of origami. We have Pure Land Origami, which uses mountain and valley folds. Those are different types of folds, folds that you can learn. Um, pretty cool, isn't it, Juan? Yes. What do you think about that, Juan? How does that make you feel? I want to do a mountain fold. You want to do a mountain fold? <laughs> I personally like the valley fold more, but you know, that's just me. Kirigami, origami that involves cutting paper. So normally people just imagine origami is just folding paper, but some of the more complex designs require you to cut paper and to different, connect them to different pieces. Strip folding, combination of paper folding and paper weaving. So pretty complex stuff. Yeah. Now that's enough about learning about origami. Now let's get into the real fun part of this workshop. Let's get Ooh. into actually doing some origami. Ooh. Now in the video, you'll find a link where you'll be able to get this QR code. It'll take you to a website and that website will have a list of different origamis that you can do. So let's Ooh. have fun. So now let's get started with the first piece. Now, most of you guys hopefully have a significant other or a family member that you love very much so, right? And Christmas is coming up or Valentine's Day is coming up. Now I know what you're thinking, Roy, it's in the middle of October, Christmas or in Valentine's is nowhere near it. But just in case, prepare for it, right? What are we gonna do? A heart, a heart that you can write a message into it, right? So let's get started, shall we? So first you wanna take your six by six origami paper it doesn't matter the dimensions of it as long as the, the length and the width are the same uh, number. So for example, like for this one is six by six. So first step you want to take, usually origami paper has like a, a front side and a back side. The front side usually color and the back side has a white like this. And so we're going to flip it over to get to the back side of this. So 
The first step is to fold into the diagonals on both sides. So take one corner and move it to the other corner, take the other corner to the other corner. Just like this. Now, I'm no expert when it comes to folding things or arts and crafts in general, so this might not be a perfect fold, but that's all right. If you mess up, it's okay, because I probably did it worse. And just like Bob Ross always used to say, there's no such thing as mistakes, happy little accidents, or something like that. I don't remember, I haven't watched the Bob Ross video in a long time. Something about happy little accidents though, I remember that much. And something about beating the devil out of it. That's my favorite part. All right, so now we have both corners moved. So now we have this cross sort of, right, lines going diagonally like that. So now what you wanna do is rotate your paper to have this diamond shape. So before you had a square, we rotate a little bit so we can have a diamond shape. Now what you wanna do is take your bottom piece, this bottom corner, move it towards the middle, like so. Again, doesn't matter if it's exactly in the middle. It might come out a little bit deformed if it's not, but that's all right. Who cares? I don't. You shouldn't either, and neither will your loved one. Now, rotate it 180 degrees, so that way this bottom corner is now at the top. Now you wanna take the new bottom corner and move it towards the very top. So rather than moving it towards the middle like we did for the other fold, we're moving it towards the very top. Now we have this. Pretty cool, isn't it? Now, you wanna make sure that this triangle, the bigger triangle that moved from the bottom towards the top is facing away from you. So this corner should be facing away from you. And now we're gonna take these sides over here and fold it in half. And you can use the, the folds that show up here, for like this little line right here. You can use that as a guideline so you can make sure you're doing it exactly at the half. You wanna do this to both sides. Lift it up like this. Now, as you can tell, mine's a little already a little bit deformed, but that's all right. Now you have you can sort of see the shape of it already, but these pointed things. I mean, you can leave it like that if you want, but I don't like them. So what we're gonna do is just gonna flip it over. And you're just gonna bend these corner pieces just a little bit, not too much, just to give it a flat edge at the top, like so. And now when you flip it over, boom, you have a nice little heart. Mine's a little messed up, but it's pretty cute, isn't it? And then, I don't know, I guess you can like open it up and write a message about how much you appreciate whoever you give this to. Now let's get started with a piece that you'll be able to find on the link from the link that we gave you, yes. That's right. So first you want to take, again, your six by six paper. Again, dimensions does not matter as long as the length and width are the same. Now, for this one, what we want to do, oh, what we're doing is a fortune teller, by the way. Everyone remember those from elementary school, right? Where it was like, G-R-E-E-N. Oh my God, you're gonna marry Stephanie and have five kids. And we're gonna make one of those again. So, you take your paper, you want to fold it in half, both ways. Now, give me a minute, because I, I struggle with folding, because I'm no Juan, I, I'm not good at this. He's a world-renowned origami master, whereas I am just an amateur. I'm his little pupil right now, I'm trying to live up to his expectations but anyways um so yeah fold it in half you know do your burrito and your taco or whatever the folds were called that kind of yeah pretty cool so now once you have your oh man i messed that up now once you have your both your half let me just fix this hold on once you have your halves what you want to do is fold it diagonally so both ways from one corner to the other corner pretty simple stuff Boom, boom. Now, if you pause the video and critique my folding skills, I will find you personally. So please don't do that, because then I'm gonna start crying. Um, boom, 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 boom. Now then, ooh, oh, I messed that up again. Oh, well, oh hold on, I can fix it, I can fix it, I can fix it. All right, let's go, I right, fixed. Now we have um, halves and diagonal folds, right? So what you wanna do, you want to take your corner and fold it towards the center. And you're going to do that for every side. So you want to get four of the corners towards the middle. Now, most of you guys probably do remember how to do this from elementary school. So if you want to follow along, you can. But if you don't, because you're already a pro at this, you don't have to. But I would appreciate it because then I get lonely, then I get sad. And uh, 
we don't want that to do. Okay, now we have the fold done, right? So, what to do next? You flip it to the other side and you do the exact same thing. So now, yeah, just fold it again towards the center. Um, pretty fun stuff. Anyways, how's your day going? Hope it's been going good. Yup. See, isn't this fun? You get to talk to yourself. Damn, this is coming out horribly. Anyways, doesn't matter. Woo, so now you have this. Now this is the final step pretty much, and this is the step that I struggle with the most. i not gonna lie, I tried doing this like 50 times and I kept messing up, but you guys probably know how to do this. I don't, I suck at it. But basically you wanna open up these little flaps over here. And uh, the best way to go about it, I have no idea how to do it. So I don't know, just struggle. You're gonna see me like struggle for like the next 10 minutes probably. Oh, oh, nope, okay, hold on. Hold on, I can fix this. Okay, uh, hold on, hold on, give me a second, give me a second. This is, all right, so push that in. Stop. Oh, oh, we're in business now. All right, okay, now I just gotta get this one to open up. Just like, oh God. No, come on, please, not like this. Damn it. All right. All right, there you go. Oh, sort of. Hold on, let me see if I can get my finger underneath this thing. Please, I'm begging. Like the one Smith song. Let me get what I want or whatever. Anyways. Please open up. Please. Not in front of my fans. All right, there, it's sort of, there you go. Boom, now we can add numbers and letters and whatever to this thing. And there you go, pretty easy, super done. Okay, now guys, we're gonna do the most fun type of origami, which is paper airplanes, right? Pretty simple, pretty basic, but let's get started. Well, we're gonna fold it in half. Well, first of all, you get your paper and then you fold it in half, like this. Boom, very nice. Very beautiful. And then after that, you can do the little triangles. I see. Boom. Que chulada. Fold it nice and neatly. Very nice. And then after that, this way it gets tricky. You fold it this way. Boom. Boom. Beautiful. But then you're not done because you wanted to fly, right? You go like this, halfway, boom, boom, boom. The other side, like math, what are you doing? One side you do to the other, boom, boom. And guess what, guys? You're ready to fly.